cool. All right. What is that you're drinking there? It looks really interesting. And, <clears throat> well, it doesn't look really. It smells really interesting, actually. It's, it, it is a <laughs> Kentucky Mule, which is just a... Uh, um, the Moscow Mule is ginger beer, which is just super mm-hmm. sweet ginger ale, mm-hmm. um, and vodka, because Moscow. And then a Kentucky Mule is uh, bourbon instead. Mm. And I put in some bitters, and they like stuck to the foam on top, so it's like super fragrant. It smells so good. And that ginger beer, um, what brand is that? Something Tree? Fever Tree. Fever Tree. They sponsor us, by the way. They do. They do. <laughs> they sponsor us. By selling their beer at Costco. Yes. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Which is thanks to you guys, the hundreds of thousands of people who listen to this podcast every week. So thank you guys. <laughs> ah, well, it's been, it's been a, f- a full week of music, even though it hasn't been a full week of gigs for us. Right. I was, I was you know, going into this podcast thinking, like, what are we going to talk about? We didn't gig, but, I mean, our lives, our music, that's what this podcast is about, Justin and Adrian's Music Life Weekly, mm-hmm. and we actually have a lot of fun things to talk about, so I'm going to start out with a dinner that I had on Monday night with uh, an old student. Right, and it's a it's a, a bit of a, I'm going to adjust myself here, it's a bit of a small world thing. Totally, um. yeah, so Samira Kadam was a voice student of mine uh, several years ago, um, but she's been playing sax since she was like five years old. Like yeah, the she's saxophone, great. Yeah. she describes it as an appendage. Like she mm-hmm. is a sax player, but she wanted to get more into voice. And she's a great singer. She just doesn't or didn't believe in herself, but you know, she knows now that she's she's got the capabilities. Anyway, the reason we had dinner was because she's getting an MBA. Well, she just got an MBA from <clears> MSU. <throat> Just finished it last month. And her uh, capstone project was to do a strategic analysis like like a paid consultant would do of Performance High. Oh, my gosh. You didn't know that? I I somehow it escaped the conversation. Yeah. And so, you know, I worked with her her group. Um, I provided them some, some answers to questions and some information like our our 10 year plan, like all this, all the VTO, all this like planning stuff that I've been right, working on. Right. I, I provided that to them as it was in progress. And then they did a ton of research themselves on the competitive landscape. Um, no way. They, they analyzed our company against several different kinds of matrices that they learned about in their, in their MB, MBA uh, mm. classes. I can't remember all of them, but, you know, like a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, it's a standard one. Right. So, you know, there's several different um, marketing analysis frameworks that you can apply to a company, and they sure. th- ran us through all of them and provided suggestions and recommendations, and some of them were a bit out there, and Samira didn't, she's like, I have to tell you, I didn't, I didn't like some of them very much. One of them, <laughs> one of them was... To, to, like, get on the, like, to, uh, you know, Blue Ocean Strategy? Have you heard of Blue Ocean Strategy? Yeah, find the, find, yeah, yes. Find, find the, the place to compete where there's no competitors. Competitors, basically. Like yeah, be, right. Be so different. Find the, find the open water. Yeah, be so different that you're not swimming right. with sharks. Um, and they were like, you know, for, for one, th- one thing you could do that would be completely different from any other vocal instructor would be to have virtual reality training between your lessons. Like, they could, like, put on VR headsets and practice singing and performing. And I was like, are you fucking... Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Forget the cost problem. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be? I mean, I, I love the creativity of that idea. I'm sorry to laugh so hard at it. I was just like, we are way too small a company to go develop VR headsets <laughs> yeah, for to, practicing to, singing. To, yeah, I know. And, and what, your teacher's not there? What, what kind of feedback are you getting? Yeah. Anyway... Overall, absolutely brilliant, brilliant top to bottom. Oh, that's so great. Analysis and one of the um, re- one of the things that came out in several of the frameworks that they analyzed was that we should have we should look for more um, partnerships and collaborations. Mm. So that's something that I I put in as as an annual goal, and then out of the blue, four different organizations have come to me to collaborate in the last month. I, you are just on fire with stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. I've mentioned three of them inside our, our Performance High network, and the fourth one just came 
on Monday, it's John Skidmore, uh, doctor of psychology, right? Who is a peak performance coach, mm-hmm. um, and he he's done presentations at the IFTOM conferences before, and I've gone through one of his workshops, and uh, he wants to collaborate to maybe offer a series of webinars with Performance High, and yeah. I was like, wow, if you feel like we have value to add, by all means, let's do something. Yeah, but for sure. I just feel like we're starting to be seen as a place that people want to collaborate with. Which is a really powerful thought. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. Yeah. That, that you've got enough going on that, that it would be worthwhile to yeah. throw in with you guys. So that's, anyway. I mean, that's just great. And, and Samira. Yeah, back to Samira. She also plays with Julian right. from the Petty Nicks project for Julian's solo stuff. Yep. She plays saxophone and does background vocals. Yeah. So that's what I was saying small at the world. top. Small, small world. world. Yeah. Uh, and I gave her guitar lessons for a while when she was trying oh. to do guitar. She she still wants to play more guitar, she mentioned. I mean, yeah. she can absolutely play guitar. That sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> she successfully learned how to She's play guitar. She's just so good at sax, and it's so natural to her that I don't think she gives herself enough credit for the other ways that she's good I, at music. I would think that that's, yeah. She's really smart. <laughs> she's incredibly intelligent. And um, and she doesn't just play sax. She plays jazz sax. Right. Which is... Jazz is her home base, so... We yeah. get it, jazz. You're very smart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know. We know. Yeah, I know. That was... That was Kevin, my drummer from high school. That was his daughter's thing. Was, uh, you know, I feel like jazz is talking down to me. <laughs> So that's our new thing. We get it, Jazz. You're very smart. I had I had a gig in the not too distant past, fairly recently. I'm not gonna say which gig with who, but um, where there was a sub, and this sub at the one and only rehearsal we had mentioned about ten times that they played mostly jazz. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I get it. I get it. This stuff is easier. It's a type. <laughs> it's definitely a type of musician. Um, and jazz is super hard and it's super smart. I also would counter with, in some ways it's easier because you don't need to learn and perfectly execute parts. It's very hard in that you have to follow these more complex harmonies, Mm. but you Mm -hmm, can also mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. play wrong notes and be like, well, that's jazz. (laughs) Whereas like pop and rock, it's like, no, you need to know there's a stop coming. Right. Right here and here, and then there's this, you know, there's all these things you have to really remember right. about arrangements. Right, the motif goes here, and it repeats twice, but the weird second time is weird here. And yeah, yeah, and there's right. not a maybe you get the melodic phrase right. It's like, no, you're playing that with the keyboard player, and it needs to be right. the exact notes. <laughs> we're, now we're talking down to jazz. <laughs> now we're talking down, we're talking down to jazz. <laughs> so there. We're throwing it down. So, um, anyway, so we move on. Yeah, let's move on. So, Saturday, yeah, jump into Saturday. Saturday, you went to Chris Cardone's gig. You guys Mm -hmm. will remember Chris Cardone, uh, was a guest on this podcast and is a good buddy of ours. Yes, yeah. And so, he's he's a DJ, and he, uh, I mean, among many other things, he's a DJ, and he spins like what feels very like homey to me in terms of dance music. It's like, right. It's like, it's trancey, it's a little industrial, it's very repetitive. I love that stuff. I yeah. love just like going to a club. I mean, not like I've done it in like a decade, but going to a club, having a drink or two, and just like... It's the, the loopy mu- stuff. It's like, I yeah. am part of the music. Ah, I love it. Yeah. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff he plays. And he wears a uh, lion mask with long... Like a really like, ornate... Mean, yeah. It's not just a mask, it's like a whole headpiece front and back with yeah like white hair down to the middle of his back um so he was playing at a place called thane's table up in northern arvada okay so i went up there because i've been wanting to support him and just experience his djing and it turns out that this is some sort of store and or bar and or hangout place for gamers fantasy players and furries So the people who wear these animal costumes, animal costumes. Yeah. So I walk in and there's like, there's people in cosplay costumes. There's a handful of furries dancing on the dance floor. So they've got like furry feet, big furry tails 
and furry, like, cartoon. And, like, the eyes are, like, six inches tall, And you know? I'm only laughing because this is at, like, five in the afternoon. It was like, at it five even, in the afternoon. Yeah, it was, it's even, like, <laughs> And it was late. totally, the light hadn't turned the lights down. So it was super bright. Um, there's, like, you know, people who, I mean, obviously, it's just a culture that, like, I have never been a part of. Right. And when I first walked in, I'll be honest, I had to make myself not laugh out loud. Because I just walk into this place, I'm like, what did I just walk into? Like, there are people dressed in cartoon outfits dancing to trance music. And I was like, this is fun. Right. So a I got different. So yeah. I got a drink, and there was a lady selling some jewelry, so I bought a necklace from her. It was pretty cool. It's a good Stevie Nicks necklace. Of nice. course, right? Which yeah. witchcraft and fantasy and stuff. It has yeah, a moon. that makes sense. Yeah. It has, it has a moon, and in the middle, there's like this um, like glassy bauble that has snakeskin in it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Huh. It's kind of neat. Pretty magic-y. It's magic yeah, yeah. I was thinking, Thane's Table, is that a Lord of the Rings thing? Maybe. I don't know why I'm asking Maybe. you. Maybe. Like, I know. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Could just be also Norse mythology. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, as I sat there and kind of settled in, I loved the view and the experience of being in a, a group and groups of people that I never have had an opportunity to hang out with. Right. And I stopped finding it like funny to laugh at more like joyful to be in that's so great <laughs> that's so great like it's a it's it, it what it was like was like it was like if you had an alter ego in a video game that you had designed for yourself mm. it was like bringing that in my opinion bringing that into real life like you can become someone else by, by yes dress. i mean that's why people like costumes at halloween and, and, and that's, stuff that's all this is yeah and that's why i mean in a more in it, uh, not innocent, but in like a much smaller degree, that's why people dress up fancy for you like to kind of pretend to be a little different than you are every day. And, um, yeah. and the subculture thing, I've been thinking about that a lot with having my involvement with punk scenes and hardcore scenes mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And there is this thing of a, a bunch of people who maybe don't feel like they fit in. Yeah in general, finding groups where they very much do fit in. Yeah. And there's something really gorgeous in that. I Absolutely, mean, even if yeah. it's not your thing. Right. Like, it's nice to go, okay, well, you know, but you guys feel really at home here. and Yeah. You know. And, and how much stronger is that connection to a community when it is a very distinct community? As opposed it, to, like, a loosely knit community. Like, exactly. Like, we're in the music community. Right. But that's huge. And, and very it, it, accepted. And varied. And, and, and yeah, very yeah, accepted. Yeah, yeah. But if you, you know, find joy in being a furry or, like, being an alternate, like, dressing up in, yeah, in like, like, fantasy costume, costumes. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's a huge group. I know that it's huge. Sure. Because I know they have, like, conferences and stuff. But, like, I would say that's a much more distinct group to belong to. And those, you either belong to it or you don't. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. And it's not a one in 10 people kind right. of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. so that's, that's got to be like a real sense of community. I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I love seeing that for, for people where they feel yeah. like they have a community. Yeah. Um, and then, gosh, speaking of community. Yeah. We went and hung out with our community Saturday after you went and saw Chris's show and then you came back and picked me up. And then we went to Tacos I, I, I Yes. Which we've talked about a million <laughs> times, but I'm only mentioning because uh, we noticed some stuff on the walls. Apparently, Tacos I, I, I is, according to Yelp, the number five taco place in the USA. Yeah. Not in Colorado, the USA. And then they had another printout where I think it was the Today Show or something like yeah. that. And they were the number 23 taco place in the United States. Yeah. So our little gas station oh, <laughs> adjacent. <yeah>. Um, <laughs> so, gosh, if, if you get a chance, head on over to Tacos IAI. It yeah. is very close to Nisi's. We never really have time. Yeah, just it's maybe a seven-minute drive. It's, we never, yeah, we and that just, it's just a little too much. And uh, but anyway. We went, so we went to Nisi's because uh, Stone Beat Invasion uh -huh. and Forever Man were both playing. and. Right. We know all those people. So Forever Man um, is fronted partly by Jerry Ska, who was a student of mine for a while and also a student of Joe's for a while. So he's taking okay, voice, voice right. lessons with both of us. 
And then... And they do Clapton. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So Forever Man, they, they're a Clapton tribute. Yeah. And phenomenal. The guitar playing is spot on. They do all the parts and all the solos, like, pretty close to note for note. I was telling you, mm-hmm. it's a little more note for note than I tend to do. Uh-huh. Um, uh, and then the vocals were just like, man, that could have yeah. been Clapton. It was just like yeah. they were nailing it. And uh, Jerry's worked hard on it. I mean, we when we had lessons, we would go word by word through the songs he was working on. And kind of that distortion blown out thing that Clapton will get yeah. like, and, and can just do very, I mean, it's his kind of signature singing thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all Jerry. I didn't teach him that at all. No, Jerry figured, <laughs> Jerry has figured out how to do that exact kind of that, that gruff thing yeah. every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, took me back a bunch because Clapton, I was, yeah. and we were hanging out with Ian Rollins, mm-hmm. who was in Stone Beat Invasion. He's played with us in Petty Nicks. He jammed with us with Noah Dress. Mm-hmm. Um, subbed in with Cody a couple times. Subbed in with Cody a couple times. Yeah. And possibly the nicest greatest like just like such a good guy you could not like a person more like an incredibly good guy um but we were talking with him and and we were both talking about how we shared like clapton and cream in particular were just huge influences on us when we were kids like Mm -hmm. starting out it was like that was sort of I don't love that this is true, but Clapton is sort of who I learned to bend strings and add vibrato from. I mean, that mm. was the that was the guy I sat down and was like, I need to figure out how to make that sound with mm. the guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so it was so great to see them, and then we saw mm-hmm. Stonebeat Invasion. Yeah, who's Ian, Stephen Cram, Bobby, yeah. Um, yeah, and Morgan, Morgan mm-hmm. Lowe. And so, gosh, connections with all those guys. So we just mentioned Ian and then Bobby Greer, just a great guy. Yeah, amazing. I could not think more highly. I mean, we're surrounded by so many wonderful people. We keep saying we could not think more highly of or could not like somebody better, but it's like all these people in our lives. Anyway, and then Morgan, of course. Morgan teaches at Performance High, and it's like, I was like a proud mom. I mean, like, she's done the work. Right. But just watching her start from a student and go to this, like, goddess on stage... And then I've also taught Steve because he's working oh, on... Oh, Stephen Cram, yeah. 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 Stephen Cram's working on a Depeche Mode tribute and he's singing that and so he's taking a few lessons with me for that. And I just felt like, man, I know so many people and we have so many relationships with people. And we saw lots of other people who were there. Oh, yeah, Dave Stasny they, oh, right. and... And, and uh, Leonard. The, right, Leonard. The music fan Leonard. And, and our crazy fans, uh, Mike and Suzanne, who come to all the Petty Nick shows, they have tickets for the next three already. Yeah, I, I, uh, I gave them a little bit of a hard time for going to see some other band other than us. <laughs> um, oh, we saw Amelia. Um, yes. Who's who, at all of our shows, yeah, too. It, is it literally all of our shows? And knows every word to every song ever. It's She's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, it was just a good hang. It was. I'm so glad we went. It, it was know. like seeing... Yeah, it was like... Uh, you know, it was just a chance to see all these people. And so we're going to, um, I think we're going to make a concerted effort to make sure we get out and see people more often. Because yeah. when you play a lot, it's very easy to just be like, hey, if we don't have to go out, like, let's not go out. Mm-hmm. But. But this is the time of our lives. Uh, yeah. You know? That's, um, and these are our friends. So we're going to make yeah, a, and this a, is a our, more of an effort. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had a complete blast. And then. Sunday, um, you know, the very next day, I was recording uh, more half sin stuff up at Global Sound, which uh, Mateo is nice enough to let us use, and uh, Mateo owns Global Sound, which is a school and it has a studio in it, and uh, he occasionally takes a day off. He sort of takes <laughs> days off like I do, which is pretty rarely. And uh, he, anyway, the funny part of the story is, I thought, I 100% thought, you know, he gave us the key and blah, blah, blah. Um, And I thought I set off the alarm for the building. Um, And I knew, because he's mentioned it to me before, they've switched it to where it's a silent alarm. Like, so it doesn't like blare, Mm -hmm. you know, a siren or something. It just calls the cops. And so we go in and the thing's flashing and it's saying like door fault, door, front door's open, front door's open. And I was like, oh no, I set off the alarm. Um, and so for the first hour we were working, I was like, well, the cops are going to be here any minute now. So like, and I left both, <laughs> both doors open and like, 
<laughs> made it very like, um, and then Mateo texted me. It was like, no, you didn't set up the alarm. That just, it, it just does that when the door is open. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Cause I'm with clients. Uh, and who, uh, uh, a, a young lady who is possibly going to be my intern. Yeah. Uh, it seems most likely. You were so excited about her. I and was I'm so, so excited too. Excited. Um, so the young lady who called you originally out of the blue mm-hmm. or contacted you. She emailed you, Performance High. Right. Yeah. Um, to ask if there were any opportunities and, um, she's very interested in songwriting and production and does production on her own, but she wants to learn more. Um, and then you connected us and we had a great phone call and, um, yeah, it was just a great day. It was great. Uh, she's a high school age. I don't know what age, but high school age. And, um, yeah, we just had a great day. I just was making her basically assist. I was showing her how to set up microphones and run cables. And then later when we were cleaning up, I had to teach her how to wrap cables because apparently no one knows how to do that. And, um, (laughs) such a jerky way to say it. Sorry. (laughs) Um, but it's true. It's very weird. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it was just a, it. I, I've been saying to you privately that I've been very burned out on recording. Like I've been doing a bunch of it, and I've been feeling very like it's just so rote and it's the same thing over and over again. And you know how to do it; you just have to do it over and over again. True of every job, it's not like that's some special thing. But just lately, I've been feeling burned out on it. Um, and unfortunately, I get to work on a lot of projects that aren't necessarily the most creative in the world. It's pretty tame stuff. And anyway having a young person there who was so excited to be learning all of those things just made me feel so much more into it and excited. And I was making her run the session and run the pro tools. And I made her sit there at the computer and actually do the engineering. And she had, there's, you know, most places the talk back, which is how you talk to people in the other room, um, is controlled by a foot switch. So you hit the foot switch and then the musicians who are in the other part of the studio can hear you talk and when you're not holding the foot switch they can't hear you talk uh and i was making her run the whole thing and giving her some work on the very first day very first day and we had some very serious talks about how important it is that when you finish a take and the musician's done you need to click on that talk back immediately and say something positive (laughs) i love that that's one of the big things you got to do. It's not like you can't leave them hanging in that room. <laughs> you need to click over and be like, great take, but great take, man. Um, and we were talking producer tricks. Hey, we got to do some uh, Pro Tools stuff for a second. Hold on one second. And you don't really need to do Pro Tools stuff. You need to like listen to something they may have messed up. But you, just, <laughs> you don't want to say, I think you may have messed up that fill. I need to like check it. You're like, hey, we got a Pro Tools thing we got to do. Um, <laughs> You're never going to be able to record me again. I, <laughs> dude, I know these tricks. And when someone does them to me, I still appreciate them. Oh. It's so much better than someone being like, hey, I think you might have messed that up. Uh, just give us a second. We're going to check it. Like, hey, uh, we gotta, we're going to try and change an EQ thing in here. And you're like, okay, cool. That means you've got to check something. I possibly messed up. But I'm so <laughs> glad you said. Like, it just. It's the right thing to do. So it was it was really fun getting a young person into that. And uh, and she took off with flying colors. I was blown away. She picked things up super quickly. And what seems rare, and this is going to make me sound like an old person, person, and I hate it, but like what seems rare in young people these days is um, she barely looked at her phone the entire day. And we were there for eight hours. And she stayed focused and present and involved in whatever task was going on, whether it was me doing stuff and just being like, hey, just, I got to do this thing really quick, or I was making her do it. Stayed focused for a full eight hours and just... That's impressive. I I don't know if I could do that. And eight hours, like... No breaks. Studio day, no breaks. You don't, like, you don't take breaks. I mean, just like... um, And I was just, I was just so impressed with her that she was just, you know, and she was happy and learning and but man it just uh you know we're gonna see if it works out mm-hmm. um but that was my first real experience with having that kind of um 
I kind of intern assistant thing, and it was, you know. I loved something you said, which was, you know, you, you can start devaluing your own knowledge when you're the one just using it over and over again, like me teaching voice lessons. Right. Or you just recording. But when you start to teach someone else how to do what you know how to do, Right. You start realizing how much you actually know. And the value of the things you know. Yes. You know, it starts being like, oh. Um, and I feel very much that, like, the value I can find in a lot of those things is in giving them. Right. I think this is worth talking about. Right. You've said this to me before. How, like, you, you've spent your lifetime so far learning the things you know about music. And... Great, but to what end have you gathered that knowledge? Right, if, who's it helping? If you don't pass it on. If you don't pass it on. Yeah. It's. If it just dies with you then, someday, then like, who cares that you learned it? <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a weird way that that's true. I mean, that's like, um, not totally true. I mean, I've loved learning it. I'm passionate about learning it, and I am still want to learn way more. But at the same time, there is exactly what you said. I say all the time. It's just, it does seem like, well, well, if it just dies with me or goes away when I stop doing this, th- then, well, you know, what value did learning all that stuff have? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can share it with somebody, then that is like, whoa, like. It's a lot more meaningful. Yeah, I'm like actually putting something into the world. It's not just like. Oh, yeah. um, can I edit stuff super fast? Like, <laughs> great, but as soon as I stop editing audio, like, what does that matter? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was like, like a great experience, and, and if it's not this particular young lady, um, uh, I think it's really going to be like a next chapter for me is mm-hmm. trying to have people around. Um, also, it will make me actually able to get the amount of work done that I need to get done if I have somebody <laughs> else helping me. Um, yeah. So that's huge. Uh, but also just um, I can just see a, a real future in making sure that there's somebody, uh, you know, I'm constantly bringing somebody up with me. Yeah, I love that. You know. Love that. Um, I think it's going to really be a game changer for me in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll really help with that burnout. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, it's that same thing. I'm sure it's what people experience with having kids and stuff, but you're really seeing it through somebody else's eyes and you're mm. just like... Oh, I remember in the distant past, um, you know, um, back when, you know, uh, microphones were powered by water wheels and stuff. Because we (laughs) didn't even have electricity. Like in the ancient (laughs) past, I remember being excited about microphones. Like in like seeing somebody be like, Oh, well, like if you move it like an inch, like it changes how it sounds. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's just check it. <laughs> And we did the whole shebang. We did the like measuring microphones because we were talking about there is a scientific side to recording. And I am not a sciencey, nerdy person except when it comes to recording. But then I have, you know, like the microphones need to be precisely, I like 42 inches from the snare and we need to position them so both overhead microphones are 42 inches from the snare um and i made her do all the measuring and stuff and then we went in and like looked at the waveforms and this is why we measure because look how all the waves are going up and down at the same time and they're not (laughs) fighting each other going different directions and that's because we measured (laughs) and sound moves at a given speed through the air so if Mm -hmm. we measure carefully use all our three one rules, we can like make sure that we're all, you know, we're getting a good drum sound. And uh and somebody being like mind blown by that when to <laughs> me it's like, God, I'm so tired of measuring stupid overheads. <laughs> <laughs> somebody just being like, whoa, that's incredible. And you're like, oh, I'm excited too. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, uh, going on and on. Um I think uh, that's probably Yeah, let's probably tie it off. One, Why yeah. not? <clears throat> um yeah, so. so so this we didn't celebrate last week. Oh my gosh, as we, we should didn't. have. So last week was episode one hundred. We have done this one hundred weeks in a row. Yeah, I mean we did we did <laughs> we have did. to bank some for the New Zealand trip. Sure, but, um, but we've been doing it for hundred weeks in yeah. a row. So and next week is going to be exactly two years. It's 
going to be 102. And interestingly, we are going to be in Panama next week. Right. So um, you guys are going to get a canned, non-fresh, yeah, evergreen of some type. Yep. So uh, deal with it. <laughs> um, and then we'll come back and tell you all about Panama. Yeah, we will. Um, anyway, guys, thanks so much again to the hundreds of thousands, possibly millions <laughs> of people who listen to this every week. It's going to go viral someday. <laughs> we really appreciate it. All of you, I know it's a weight, but it's also a real joy to be such a part of the national conversation. <laughs> so we really appreciate that. Um, anyway, guys, we are sponsored by Performance High. The Voice and Music Studio. And Fever Tree, Ginger Beer. Um, they're the greatest. And Tacos, I, I, I. Yeah. Um, if you guys... Are in Colorado and you get a chance, absolutely worth your time going over there. Super mm-hmm. cheap and super good. Mm-hmm. So um, thank you guys so much, and we will see you in two weeks. Yes. <laughs>